What's going on all my YouTube buddies? It's me, Jacob, with another video. Welcome to another installment in my Celebrating Disney series. Last time I talked about their first animated feature, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Today I'll be taking a look at their critically acclaimed follow-up, still considered one of their best animated works to this day, and that is Pinocchio. So if you're new to my YouTube channel, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, vlog videos, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. If you enjoyed this video, consider clicking that subscribe button and the little notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. I will leave a link to my last video in this series for Snow White in case you missed it. There will be a lot of spoilers in this video as I'm going truly in depth on Pinocchio and all the amazing things about that film. If you have not seen Pinocchio, do not watch this video. Watch the film and come back later to see what I have to say. So Pinocchio was the second animated feature from Walt Disney Animation Studios. It was released in 1940. It's based on a novel of the same name by an Italian author named Collodi. And in Pinocchio, we join Geppetto's beloved puppet Pinocchio with Jiminy Cricket as his guide on a thrilling quest that tests Pinocchio's bravery, loyalty, and honesty, virtues he must learn to become a real boy. So right off the bat, Pinocchio improves in every single aspect on a visual standpoint. Uh, because of the money Walt Disney made off the success of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, he was able to invest in a larger studio, and invest in new animation technique and just work harder and improving every little thing in the art of animation after succeeding the first go round. And I think it's even crazier in the fact that Walt actually developed this film while in the production of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, uh, which was a big gamble for him already because that movie could have bombed and he wouldn't have made another animated film if it bombed. Uh, Pinocchio is great in the fact that uh, they, they invested a lot more in improving the animation and the animation is still some of the best that he's ever done as far as the 2D stuff goes. You get to see more improved and bolder shots of the multi-plane camera the character animation is a lot stronger and the characters are a lot more naturally realistic especially the design of pinocchio is although he is a wooden boy the the death of him is phenomenal to look at it it's crazy that they were able to make pinocchio so natural relatable through the design of the animation uh I also love the look of Monster of the Whale as that creature is so terrifying and so scary real to look at that I forget that I'm watching an animated film. So Pinocchio's story structure is really crazy. I watched Joe to Disney Guys video prior to filming this. I will leave a link to that video as well as again it's a fantastic series that he's doing and he brought up that the movie does have an episodic structure and yeah it definitely does if you're not a fan of that then you won't like this film as much as other people and so pretty much there's three acts to Pinocchio's journey to becoming a real boy the first is him getting duped into becoming a stage actor in the hands of the sadistic moneymaker Stromboli who after his big knight locks him in a birdcage and threatens to cut him into firewood if he doesn't do his job right. <laughs> yeah, that's very crazy. And then, of course, you also have that iconic moment where he lies to the blue fairy, and every time he lies, his nose keeps growing and growing. An iconic moment in the Pinocchio story. The second act of the story is him getting tricked again and to going with a group of naughty children to Pleasure Island where the boys can do whatever they want. They can smoke, they can drink beer, they can roughhouse each other, vandalize fancy homes, and even the Mona Lisa, apparently. Apparently playing pool is bad in this world, but I don't really get why playing pool is bad. I mean, I consider myself a good person, and I play pool sometimes. I don't smoke or drink or any of the other stuff, but I don't see anything wrong with playing pool. I don't know. I don't know why you think that's wrong, Disney. But then I'll get to more Pleasure Island later on in the video. And then the third act of the story is Pinocchio. 
going on a quest to rescue Geppetto from the clutch of the monster of the whale. Monster has swallowed Geppetto while he was looking for him, and Pinocchio decides to go on the heroic act to save him. And I think all three stories work, and I think what makes Pinocchio work in all the right ways is it's a morality tale. Obviously, the story relies on Pinocchio's character journey to prove himself to be brave, truthful, and unselfish so he can become a real boy. And because they make Pinocchio so innocent and relatable, uh, the journey is so special. I think one of the hardest things they could have done is to screw up on Pinocchio as a whole and make the character completely unlikable just because he's a wooden boy. I think apparently in one of the original drafts, I think Pinocchio was almost originally written to be a smart aleck jerk type character. I'm glad they did not go that route because if they did, I wouldn't have liked the character near as much. Uh, I'm glad they changed Pinocchio to where he's good natured at heart, but because he doesn't know how the world works, he does fall into everyday temptations. So that's why I say it's a morality tale at heart. And he learns lessons along the way. And that's why I love the Pleasure Island sequence so much. It really messed me up as a kid. Uh, you, you see the fact, it looks like the stuff these kids are doing are so much fun. And I ain't gonna them going to an amusement park. Uh, I would have loved to go to, but then you see these kids doing all these naughty things in the amusement park. Like, okay, something's going on with this. And then we see... Minutes later, uh, this naughty behavior turns the kids into donkeys, and then they get involved in this really messed up slave operation. Some of the donkeys are so, like they lose their ability to speak, and some of them are sold to like the circus, and some of them are sold to like these coal mines or salt mines, and. Some of the donkeys are still able to talk, but I honestly don't want to know what the coachman does to those donkeys that are still able to talk. It sounds like... Yeah, I still don't want to know. It sounds really messed up and beyond uh, this movie. G <clears throat> we see Pinocchio's buddy Lampwick uh, get turned into a donkey. and That scene, I think, almost traumatized me as a kid. And seeing his hands turned to like, donkey hooves and horror. <laughs> As <laughs> he turns into a donkey and loses his human emotions. And I was like, uh, I think the first time I saw Pinocchio, I'm like, Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be smoking anytime soon. <coughs> and I, I still hadn't fallen into that habit now at the age of 23. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to thank Pinocchio for that probably. <laughs> Another thing I love about this film is Jiminy Cricket. Uh, I think Jiminy Cricket is another one of those characters that was hard to create because Jiminy Cricket was a hard character to create because Jiminy is Pinocchio's conscience who's supposed to guide Pinocchio in the decisions that he makes. I think if they had written Jiminy Cricket as too perfect, I think it would have derailed the experience. I don't think I would have enjoyed the character as much. But what I love about the character is while he is clearly determined in helping Pinocchio, he's not perfect either. Uh, he does a lot of things that are really messed up considering most people associate Jiminy Cricket as a perfect character. I mean, you see in the film he... Is clearly a ladies' cricket. He has the hots for the blue fairy, and he even has some of the female puppets that aren't alive, which is a little creepy. He does have a temper tantrum and wants to get in fights. Uh, we see him want to beat up Lampy, and he also has a potty mouth. Uh, one sequence, he <laughs> calls Pinocchio a jack, which is really messed up. Again. How is this movie rated G? Because <laughs> of the vocabulary Jimmy Cricket uses, for example, in the Pleasure Island scene also. But again, they wrote Jimmy Cricket as someone who's not perfect either, and like Pinocchio, who learns valuable lessons along the way, Jimmy Cricket learns how to be a better guide and conscience the more Pinocchio gets into trouble. And I think that improves the Jimmy Cricket character as well, and he has a good arc in the film as well as Pinocchio. Uh, I brought up the animation, I brought up uh, the characters and the themes of morality, and it all works out because, you know, at the end of the film, 
uh, Pinocchio does die after saving his father from Monstro. And even though the death is brief and like the next scene, uh, the Blue Fairy found Pinocchio worthy of being a real boy and he's revived and is a real boy. It still really cuts deep. I mean, it was a dark move to actually have Pinocchio die at the end of the film, but then in true Disney fairy tale fashion, you had the happy ending and they sing When You Wish Upon a Star and it's a completely satisfying film that's completely worth your time. Uh, it goes through all the right emotions. Like Snow White, Pinocchio definitely hits all the right emotions. It's very hopeful and optimistic. It's dark and depressing when it needs to. And it just hits all the right notes to make a completely satisfying film that has some funny moments, has some sad moments, has some inspirational moments, has some downer moments. It all works out in the end. Another thing I like to bring up is the fact that Tokyo is kind of a musical, but not really. Uh, there are songs that they set up at the beginning of the film and you think Pinocchio will be a full-on musical. Then they stop singing in the second half and it never felt jarring to me. The songs in the first half of the film are really, really good. I mean, When You Wish Upon a Star is still Disney's anthem. I mean, that's a song they play in the Disney logo to this day. And that's a staple of the Disney parks during the fireworks stuff. I think even in like, I think some of the wonderful world of Disney at generations over the years. I think that was the theme song in a lot of them. So that is Disney Sanfa, and deservedly so because the the hopeful message it brings about the power of faith and your dreams coming true because of that. Uh, I also, another great song, I'll, I've always loved I've Got No Strings, some about Pinocchio during the Stromboli scene. Uh, I've always thought that was a fun song and along with Give a Little Whistle. It's by Jimmy Cricket. Uh, the score of this film, not too many people talk about the score, but I think the score is top notch. I think it's the same composers that did Snow White and they do an all out job of making the score so epic and it really fits the mood of each scene and also all the characters and their emotions and even in every shot, it's a very top notch score and I'm glad it won the Oscar because it is excellent. I don't have any real issues with this film. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite Disney films. If you saw my ranking of Disney's Golden Age, which I'll leave a link to that as well, uh, Pinocchio is actually my second favorite film of that era. And it actually does everything right to make a grounded epic. Uh, sadly though, Pinocchio, believe it or not, bombed when it first came out. And the blame for Pinocchio's failure wasn't because of bad reception. I mean, critics and audiences loved it, even in 1940, and it did win some Oscars. It won for the best original song for When You Wish Upon a Star and the score. Uh, the blame was due to the fact that foreign markets were shut down due to World War II, especially in Europe and Asia. And that really messed up the worldwide box office. But the reception for Pinocchio, like a lot of classic Disney films, grew over time to the point where Pinocchio is considered one of Disney's greatest works. And I definitely agree with that statement. I actually think it's a better film than Snow White. Uh, it is a great morality tale. I love the three-act structure. I think all the stories work in itself. Uh, Pinocchio is such a relatable character along with Jiminy Cricket. The songs are great. The animation is superb. Uh, the attention to detail and the improvement of technologies is incredible. In fact, even the water in a 2D animated film looks so real that one of the animators rightfully said, we made the water look so real that you could drown in it. And yeah, I definitely believe that statement. Pinocchio is excellent. One of the best Disney films of this day. Uh, I think it's probably my top five Disney animated films even now. And I am going to rate Pinocchio five out of five stars. And on the 100 point scale, I am giving Pinocchio a 100 out of 100. <laughs> Pinocchio is incredible. It's definitely one of my favorite Disney films. If you have not seen Pinocchio, or you're one that 
were a little too scared and traumatized by some of the messages of the kid, definitely revisit Pinocchio. Uh, I think it's definitely worth your time. And it's easily one of the, of the best animated Disney films. And now I will hand the camera over to my sister Jamie, who will share her brief thoughts on Pinocchio. Hey, what's going on? I'm Jacob Martin's sister Jamie. And I'm talking about the Disney's follow-up to Snow White, and that is Pinocchio. A charming cartoon about a live puppet who wants to be human, but has proved himself brave, truthful, and unselfish before that can happen. Okay, when I was eight years old, I didn't know what got in my head, but I started having a potty mouth. Of course, I didn't know what I was thinking, but give me a break. I mean, no, I was thinking about the singing Pinocchio where Pinocchio's friend turned into a donkey. That got in my head, and I started using that word, and then my mom caught me, and I stopped saying it. Well, since I grew up in a Christian family, I'm not allowed to say anything dirty. I like it during a cricket, and you know, for a conscience, I mean, well, enough for a cricket who is supposed to be Pinocchio's conscience, Jubilee doesn't know how to act like one because there's this one scene where it says, I'll knock your block off! I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, knock your block off. <laughs> and maybe it's me, but I feel. I think uh, Pinocchio came up with the phrase Slaff Box. Yeah, Honest John, anyone? I don't know if that was part of the actual story, or I don't know because I never read the book. But yeah, that could have been a thing. The fox and the cat walking upright like they're humans and nobody's noticing. I mean, yeah, the children running by didn't notice, saying, like, yeah, for this town, where is everybody? And the only side of we saw were the children and Geppetto and Stromboli. I mean, yeah. Where are the other citizens of the town? All humor aside, overall, Pinocchio is a charming cartoon. And for a cartoon from the early 40s, the animation still holds up good. I mean, yeah, the whale monstro. Yeah, he is pretty intimidating. I also need to bring up the songs. I mean, yeah, especially the song We Wish Upon a Star, which is Disney's anthem. I mean, yeah, if it wasn't for uh, We Wish Upon a Star, we wouldn't uh, have uh, Disney saying your dreams will come true and all that. And I would give Pinocchio four and a half out of five stars. I mean, not, uh, well, long, well, alongside um, that weird little tr uh, pleasure island trip and the poor boys turning into donkeys. Still give this uh, four and a half out of five. I mean, yeah, it's still a Disney masterpiece. All right, back to Jake. So that was my review of Pinocchio. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've seen Pinocchio, please let me know what you thought of the film down below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? Uh, whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. And I will leave, and I will do some comment shout outs in upcoming videos if I do get any respectful comments in any of my videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button to see more content, and a little notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, vlog videos, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. Join me in the next installment of Celebrating Disney, where I'll be taking a look at the most ambitious project of Walt Disney's career, Fantasia. If there's any other Disney films you'd like me to tackle in the series, definitely request them in the comments down below. I hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!